One of the first things you'll notice about Chris Perkins is that he is exceptionally genuine, and that comes off in his show, Dice Camera Action, and also when he dungeon masters Penny Arcade's Acquisition Incorporated live show. And so I had to ask him, what is it like doing Dice Camera Action? What is it like to perform D&D live on stage for Acquisitions Incorporated in front of all of those people? Like, for you, what is it like to be on stage, like, to be on stage that first time? And Terrifying. <laughs> Horrifying. It still is. Um, I'm an introvert. Uh, being on camera, being on stage terrifies me. And I'm a, sh I'm a wreck. Up to, like, the second minute into the game, when everything else falls away, and I'm just playing D&D &D with friends again. Um, that's the only thing that gets me through those experiences. Uh, if I had to remember that there's an audience out there who are mentally dissecting my performance and the game and wondering why I'm ignoring this rule and ignoring that rule and uh, sort of uh, second-guessing, questioning my abilities, uh, that would be paralyzing. But as soon as the dice start rolling, as soon as the role playing begins, the audience fades away. And it's like I'm in a room with four people sitting around a table again. I don't think I'll ever get over the butterflies and the terror, despite having DM'd now for over 30 years. I think that's okay. I, I think that that gives a little bit of an edge. Um, I think insecurity is healthy. Um, I fear that if I were to ever lose that insecurity, something might suffer. With the Dice Camera Action Group, um, I actually did not know any of them before we sat down to play for the first time. Uh, these were not people that I had hung out with or had had any, any dealings with at any point in the past. What, what brought us together was um, we were just looking to start up a D&D game, a live stream game, and we were looking for people who seemed to be just kind of warm and open and creative souls uh, who are nerds, They're, they love nerdy stuff, and they kind of share a nerdy common language. Um, and I had no idea how that chemistry would play out. Uh, it's been very interesting for me to watch this group gel um, because it's, these aren't like my high school friends that I, that I corralled into doing this. Um, we are just these drifting spirits in the, the ether of the world who just happen to be uh, all tied to a love of gaming. The audience, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't exist. <laughs> it's, it's literally just me with the players. They can't throw fruit at you and stuff right. like that. Yeah, right? and I don't have chat windows up when I'm DMing. So I don't see what, I can't see what the community, my, the producer can, but I can't see what the community is saying, why they're yelling at me for threatening the baby owlbear in the party or anything like that. So it's, it's just me DMing and I feel, and fortunately, the players I'm with are all very funny people. Uh, they uh, are wonderful players to have. Um, so they make it so easy on me because they'll do things that is not optimal for their characters simply because it'll be entertaining or fun or because it is in character for them to behave that way. So they put themselves in all the glorious predicaments uh, quite nicely. <laughs> and that makes me happy from a storyteller point of view. I certainly feel like just another guy who's a DM. I don't feel like I'm... When I'm playing with um, Holly and Anna and Nate and Jared and the other people who, uh, who joined in the fun on Dice Camera Action, I never feel like I'm putting on a show. All I'm trying to do is ha make sure the players are having a good time. Uh, and to put them in situations that are going to make them feel a little bit uncomfortable so that they have to improvise and, and uh, uh, possibly do wacky things or might lead to a strange conversation or something. But I don't have any ulterior motive beyond that. It's simply, these people are making time to sit down with me to play this game. I'm going to make sure I give them the best experience I can. Uh, that's really all I can do. And I think that's what brings them back. Certainly the internet and all of that has allowed this to happen. Um, before that, it was always the tools weren't there to really get it out. But it's been startling, um, unexpected. I didn't know when we first started doing the Acquisitions Inc. games on stage whether they would be entertaining and people would enjoy just sitting and watching instead of playing. 
so the discovery that it is spectator, um, uh, it, it has a lot to get spectators hooked and it demystifies the game in a way that can't be demystified really any other way. Um, it got uh, the Acquisition Sync games, the Critical Role games, and all the other games that are out there now have basically shown various ways to play D&D, um, what individual DMs and players bring to their games means that no two are exactly the same. And what that's created is this feeling that anybody can go out there and start a D&D game, just gather some people, run a game, and have a following, and uh, tell a cohesive story, and uh, not have it be like anything else out there. I find it surprising constantly, daily, um, the number of games that keep coming up. It seems like every week somebody's starting up another D&D game and people are now in the enviable position of saying, my week is full of D&D. Um, I've got D&D on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. You can watch games. There will come a time when you can literally watch D&D online 24-7. That makes me happy. Well, and I'm, I'm glad I was there in the formative stages of that. Um, and so that I can, I can uh, look back and say, hey, um, uh, I remember when there was no, there was no competition. <laughs> there was just <laughs> me and the Penny Arcade guys goofing around and thinking, my, this is going to be a complete waste of time. <laughs> Why do you like this? Because you've done this, you've played your whole life, this is down your career. You put yeah. yourself in like, Anxiety-inducing situations. Oh, I don't. The people I work with put me in anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> <That's my job. laughs> if I had my choice, I'd be like just under a rock working on a D&D project of some sort. Um, no, um, for me, uh, it's good. As much as I internal, internally struggle with it, it's healthy for me uh, to get out side to kind of put myself out there. I think it's just a healthy behavior of humans to get out of your comfort zone once in a while because you'll discover things about yourself that you didn't know were true or you'll flex some muscles that you don't typically get to use. Me being me falling into the antisocial introvert isn't going to help me make friends or get very far in life, so I need these opportunities to go out and it's a great opportunity to meet people, to meet new people, to game with new people, to discover fans out there who are doing new and interesting things. Uh, so it's, it's good to put myself out into the world. Uh, the way I see it, if I make mistakes and other people see my mistakes, then they can say, oh, he makes mistakes. That's OK. I make mistakes too. I guess that's normal. And it's OK for a DM to make mistakes, or it's OK for a DM to have insecurities or misgivings. It's perfectly normal. Um, and I think that's a good message to send out there. The other thing that keeps me out there is there have been a number of incidents in the last 10 years since we started running Acquisitions Inc. that have inspired me. Um, for example, uh, at one, after one of the live games, I met a, a man who uh, was in the US military and he served in Afghanistan and he had a really difficult time out there. Uh, and his wife would send him DVDs of the games, of the Acquisitions Inc. games and he'd watch them, and it would remind him of his childhood experiences playing with his friends back home. And those games got him through that experience. And um, so he wrote me this letter, and he gave me the patch off his military, his Air Force military uniform, and told me about how critical it was that these games, uh, the function that they served in his life to help him cope with what he was going through. And I was so struck and moved by that and surprised because I didn't realize at that time that these games could have a meaning for people far deeper than simply entertainment. Uh, that it motivated me to keep this up because what's my discomfort compared to the possibility of these games actually helping somebody get through a real world ordeal? And so that. Those kinds of experiences have happened periodically over the last several years, and more than anything else, those inspire me to keep going despite whatever character flaws I have that want me just to not do that anymore. Thank you, Chris Perkins, for being on Dungeon Life, a show entirely about D&D, its creators, and its community. And this is all made possible 
through Patreon. With our contributors there, this show is not possible to be made. And also, those contributions help us make this show better. We give them early access to our videos so we can get early feedback before we publish and also show them behind the scenes footage as well. And that helps steer this channel. And this show isn't possible without the amazing D&D community. You guys have been exceptionally positive, constructive with your feedback and just so supportive. We cannot do this without you and we would not want to. Thank you so much for watching.